Another new day is here. Just letting the weasel stretch his legs out here at this little open area. This little horseshoe grass, sort of, I think it's a grassy area in the summertime. We're at this truck stop in Quebec. I don't know what it is or where it is, but it's right here. We're gonna start today here. We got to rush over to uh, St. Raymond, Quebec, drop off a piece there today. And from there, we got to rush over to North Sydney, Nova Scotia, where we meet the ferry. That's gonna take us eight hours over the ocean to the island of Newfoundland where we got one more delivery to make. And after that, we'll probably come back to the mainland empty. At least that's what I'm assuming. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for any length of years, you'll remember these routes. These are the routes we did for six years back in the day. It feels good to be back out here. I, I like it. I really missed this. So I think Diesel's excited to be out here too. I'm gonna try to give him lots of time every day to get out of the truck and stretch his legs. I can't always let him off leash like this. Only when we're like the only people around. I think this place is closed probably because of the virus. There's no one here. And it's sort of like a little horseshoe, right? He's like, and he's getting old. He listens pretty well. But uh, as, as often as I can, I want to let him off leash just to stretch his legs. But uh, very often I have to leave him on the leash. It's an eight meter leash. Made in Germany. I got this on uh, Amazon. So even if I have to have him on the leash, which I'm totally fine with, if that's what I have to do, uh, he's got lots of lots of room to run around without having to be like tugged on, you know. It's always good for him to be able to, you know, stretch his legs a little bit. <laughs> Diesel, hey, hey. Oh. You love to run, don't you? <laughs> All right, go do your thing, buddy. I'm going to talk to the good people for a second. So my plan is... I want to, oh, there's a phone on the ground here. Look at that, that's my phone. Glad I saw that. <laughs> so the plan is I want to get him out of the truck running around for at least an hour every day, if not more. So 15 minutes in the morning, a half hour, middle of the day and 15 minutes in the evening. And that's just on my busy days when I have to keep moving. On the days when we have a little bit more time, I want to take him out for a couple of hours on a walk. Such a good boy. We want to make sure he has plenty of time to stretch his legs during the day. He's gotten into such good shape being at home with Britt and beating up Chevy, our other dog, every day. <laughs> they wrestle a lot and chase each other around the yard all day. And he misses his brother when he's out here. But apparently when I'm on the road, he misses me. So he, he's, he misses somebody all the time. Be nice if we could all be together all the time, eh? But alas, there are these bills that need to be paid. So here we are. That's life. We're all living through it. We're all going through the same thing. So uh, I switched over to Van Division uh, because I believe there's more opportunity here for me in the current moment. I went over to Flatbeds for three years and I loved it. The people that I was working with were great. I had a lot of fun, I learned a lot of things, I, I gained a lot of good experience. Uh, but uh, to be honest with you, my heart was out here uh, on these routes and on Van Division. Uh, it's not like I just, it's not like I'm just a door swinger now, it's not all we do. There's a lot of extra work involved in delivering what we deliver. Uh, but a lot of that I can't talk about anyway. So. What's in the trailer doesn't always matter. What matters is that you and I are here traveling around Canada and the United States, having fun, seeing the sights and uh, being a paid tourist for the most part. And of course, what's most important is Diesel, the Lord of all weasels over there. Lord of the realm, Lord of all the weasels. 
But I'm the king, just to be clear, I'm the king. Well, we finally got ourselves onto the, the bigger highways here again. We're nearing Montreal. Montreal! We're gonna be going around Montreal on, what is that, Auto Road 640? I don't know, one of those. I don't know where we are, I can't read any of the signs. All I know is we're near Montreal and I'm following my GPS and I checked to make sure she knew what she was talking about. Let's see if she disappoints me or not. But we gotta get to closer to Quebec City. That's where my drop is, that's where St. Raymond is. They're expecting me there and we are 248 kilometers away at this moment. That's about two and a half hours if we don't hit any traffic in Montreal. Though Quebec really does seem to be taking this lockdown more seriously, especially than Manitoba, probably because they have way more cases here of the virus. But uh, last night they had check stops, like every 100 kilometers on the highway, just to make sure that uh, people were only traveling for essential reasons and telling everybody else to go home. At least that's how it was on the Highway 117 there. This is a fun little scenic route on the way to St. Raymond. We just uh, left the auto route, which is the French word for a uh, freeway. L'auto route or auto route? Auto route? I don't know. Auto route. And now we're on these little twisty, windy roads back here in backcountry Quebec uh, between Trois Rivières and uh, Quebec City. trailer there you go yeah you know, we're good so my impressions of this truck are actually it, it's a pretty phenomenal truck it's it's amazing the seat that I'm sitting on is amazing it's got some kind of weird technology in it it's not like a regular air ride seat it's got some kind of like, I don't know what it is but it's the comfiest smoothest ride I have ever felt in my life uh, the only thing that I could criticize on this truck is the transmission. We got this automatic 10 speed transmission. 10 gears is not enough in a semi. It's not enough. You need at least 12. I would say 13, 18 is better, but in an automatic, all right, you need more than 10. Because going up and down these hills, the, the, the gap between the gears is too much. You're either bogging down or you're revving it above where it should be. Uh, it's just it's hard to find a middle ground and I'm still getting used to driving this truck like don't get me wrong I've still got a lot of uh, learning to do here and got to get comfortable with it but one thing's definitely for sure uh, 10 speed is not enough and I'll stick with that that's my my only critique really like the truck is huge in here I got lots of room the bed is huge the cab is spacious I've just about gotten rid of the smoke smell from the last driver. That really has nothing to do with the truck though, that has to do with who was driving it last and uh, chain smoking in here. And uh, I'm glad that they weren't in here for too long because then everything in here would be all, you know, have that smoke mildew on it and all yellow and gross. But, oh well. It's still a very nice truck. Uh, it's got pretty good power. But that power could be put, again, again, that power could be put to much better use. Like here, we're bogging down. Bogging down so it wants to grab the next gear. But it, it, it can't quite decide which gear it needs. And uh, it makes it a little frustrating. So I have to go into uh, manual shifting a lot of the time in these hills. Right now, I'm just in automatic, just rolling through here. Because, I mean, it'll do it. It'll get you through, but... I would prefer a stick, like a, a manual transmission, but very few trucks these days have manual transmissions. I don't know if you've noticed at all, but almost all fleet trucks are automatic. And whether you like that or don't like it, that's just the way it is. I'm guessing this road is not gonna straighten out. It's gonna take us a little while to get through here. Apparently we've got some construction coming up here. We're just following the river here. This is very classic French uh, agriculture. You see all the houses are along here. This long road follows the river. And uh, all these houses are right on riverfront property, right? And they have long strip farms. So they're narrow farms out that way. But they, uh, 
they're very long. They, they stretch way inland. They're very narrow. That's a French way of doing it. You can see that on the Google Maps. If you look at Quebec, you'll see a bunch of strip farms. And if you look at Manitoba, you can actually see where the French had settled uh, in the beginning. Because you can see along the rivers, they have those same strip farms. That way, everybody got riverfront property. And that's how you uh, transported your agricultural products back in the day before there was roads and railways, right? You'd always have to bring it down to the river. Plus, that would be, uh, I guess, your source of drinking water and everything else you need water for. So everybody got uh, access to water. And the communities were just stretched out along these long roads that follow the river. The river's over there. And we're bogging down again. Oh, this truck. I hate this transmission. I'm going to use that word. It's a harsh word. I don't use it very often, but this transmission. Peterbilt, I love your trucks, but right off the bat, put some more gears in these things, man. I'm sure you have transmissions with more gears. This is probably just the one that was chosen for this truck. Well, we're all delivered. That was a crazy little small town to drive through, eh? Straight out of like the 17th century. <laughs> so now we're uh, past Quebec City along the St. Lawrence River at the first rest area uh, on the way to New Brunswick. And we stopped to let the weasel stretch his legs, let me stretch my legs. Get out of the truck for a little bit. Come on, Diesel, let's keep going. Come on, bud. Very interesting. Very interesting. I think there was a, a, a French poodle here, man. Well, that would make sense. We're in Quebec. That's right. Yeah, you leave your mark there. You let them know the Lord was, the Lord Weasel was here. Absolutely, man. Yeah, this is a pretty cool little rest area here. Like, Quebec has some really neat, really nice little rest areas. And so far, they're still open here, so I'm gonna take advantage of it and go for a little walk. I wonder what all these buildings are back here. You see that? Huh. Interesting. Well, we're gonna go see where this trail leads to anyways. If Diesel will come with me, he's getting distracted by every single tree. Diesel, you can't mark all of them. You can't have them all. I can try, man. A guy can try. Really stinks out here. There's farmers' fields all around here, and somebody just cleaned out their barns. They're gonna get a good crop by the smells of it. Some high quality fertilizer. So, uh, I thought today was Friday when I was filming this. Turns out it's Thursday. So, I'm gonna call my customer. I was, I was expecting to be there. Uh, Saturday night or something like that and have to deliver Monday morning Well, they they're typically closed on Saturdays and if I can get to the ferry tomorrow, I would probably be there for Saturday morning But since they're typically closed, uh, maybe it's a small town community Very often if you ask nicely, they'll come in on the Saturday just to unload you. It only takes 15 minutes So if they live just down the street or something, you know, they can just show up unlock the door 15 minutes, you're unloaded and on your way, I can go back to the ferry and probably get to my reload so I can reload Monday morning on the mainland. So that's what we're gonna try to do. If not, I'll end up sitting uh, 
in Newfoundland over the weekend. I will get there probably still Saturday morning, and I'd have to sit there. I'd get a reset out of it. I'd have to sit there till Monday and uh, make the most of it. But we'll give them a call tomorrow, now that I know what day of the week it is, and see if they would uh, see if they feel like unloading me on Saturday. If not, that's cool. But if so, that'll uh, that'll get me a step ahead for next week. Diesel, not too far. Oh, that's far enough, buddy. I don't want to go on the road here. That's the St. Lawrence River out there on the other side of the highway, way in the back there. That river uh, is where Canada began. All the settlers and voyageurs and there used to be big like 16th and 17th century ships that would sail down this river here from the Atlantic Ocean up that way, down that way towards the Great Lakes and uh, they settled Quebec City just nearby here. Further down the river is Montreal. Further down yet, uh, you get to Toronto. A lot of history on that river right there. I'm still 1,200 kilometers just from the ferry though. Uh, so I could probably make about, I'll probably get half of that done today, I'll do half tomorrow. So I'll get there at a decent time. Maybe I can get on the evening ferry. Apparently there's two ferries per day, one in the morning, one in the evening. Uh, I'll get in the, on the evening ferry if I'm lucky. If not, then the Saturday morning ferry. Uh, but it's quite a ways yet. It's quite a ways. And once we're on the island, it's only another like, 200 kilometers or two hours to my delivery point and then two hours back to the ferry. Uh, 1,200 kilometers, what is that in miles? Uh, 1,200 kilometers, 12 hours of driving. So what, just go six times 12? Two. 672, 720 miles. Is that right? Let's say 750 miles that I have to go to the ferry. That's just my best guess right now. I don't have a calculator on me. Come on, Diesel. You're not drinking from the ditch, are you? Come on, man. We're civilized, man. We don't drink from the ditch. So we're walking down this pathway here, right? It's just down the road from this uh, rust area. And it says, attention, chevaux dans le sentier, relentesse. You see that? I had to Google what it meant. At first, uh, Google translated chevaux as hair. So I'm like, attention, hair, and then sentier is the path, and dans le means on the path, or in the path. And relentesse, I Googled it, that says, I mean, slow down. So I'm like, attention, there's hair in the path, slow down. Like, what is there a barber shop down here? So I don't know how it got hair out of that, but I googled it again. And the second time, it translated it as horses. Makes a lot more sense. Attention. Horses in the path. Or on the path. Slow down. We gotta slow down, Diesel. There's horses. Okay? Horses. Could I just put English up there and... Well, I, I guess that would have taken all the fun out of Googling it and me looking like I'm <laughs> all confused to the people here. <laughs> they could probably hear me talking to myself. I was Googling it and I was like, attention, hair in the path? Hair? I don't get it. Is that a French thing? Is it hair in the path? Like a, like a hair, like a, a rabbit hair? No. Horses on the path. That makes more sense. There's a nice little pathway here, though. Look at this. French people are very big into uh, ATVs and uh, off-roading, snowmobiling, outdoors activities like this. So it's it's not surprising to me at all that uh, there's ATV trails here in Quebec. There's a lot of French municipalities in Manitoba where I live as well, and all of them there, same thing. They all love uh, the outdoors. They all love, you know, ATVs. They all have side-by-side -side snowmobiles. They're all big hunters. I'm generalizing, but you know, the majority of them, they're really big into that, so. It's a French thing. I think it's pretty cool. I like it too. I just need to get my quad all fixed up so that I can use it. But one thing at a time, right? One thing at a time. Well, Trucker Josh found his element again. In the bush. 
with the weasel. I don't know where this trail goes, but there's a trail here. So we're following it. Look at this. The Quebec wilderness. I'll take it. I wish our property had big, beautiful trees like this. The trees don't grow as big in Manitoba because we have, we're further north and it's a lot colder climate there and uh, shorter growing season and just different, uh, we live in a different forest. We have a lot of jack pines, poplars, or poplars, are they poplars? Birch, what do I know? Different trees. These are nice though. Can you imagine like building a tree house way up there? One of the great things about the interior of this truck are the lights. It is so bright in here and I love it. Ask my wife. When I go home, I turn on all the lights because I like everything to be super bright. Look at this, I gotta like clean you guys off because it shows off all the dust I haven't cleaned off the lens yet. <laughs> and I've got curtains that go around my windshield that aren't broken. I can go on and on about how much I love this truck. I really, really do like it. Lots of room. I still have to organize it, still have to clean it. It's going to take a week, maybe a few weeks, but Weasel here is going to help me, right? Absolutely, man. This truck is a Cadillac. It is. It's the Cadillac of trucks. It's a Peterbilt. Who's Peter? I don't know, but he built it. He builds good trucks. So we're going to end the day here. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm already ready for bed, so you can't see me right now, but you can see the Lord Weasel. It was a fantastic day, guys. We're in New Brunswick. Very nice. Lots of police checkpoints, though. Kind of scary. I know, eh? Police checkpoints. But we got waved through the express lane every single time. You know why? You want to know why, Diesel? Why tell me? Because we're essential. That's why. But anyways, I will leave you with this magnificent, handsome face. Because it's way more handsome than my face. <laughs> He's tired. He's a tired boy. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Don't forget to tune in. Tomorrow, we will be arriving at the ferry to Newfoundland. It's going to be exciting. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Subscribe, guys. Come on. He's begging. <laughs>